Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. It's Tuesday, January 31st, 2023. Here's your integral of the day. Indefinite integral of x squared times the square root of 3 plus 2x minus x squared dx. If you want to pause it and give it a go, I'm going to forewarn you. It's lengthy, it's spicy, and it took me about like two nice full pages to do. I just thought I'd switch up the difficulty level, okay? Some days we can do like cute ones, and then some days I'm choosing to push the envelope. Okay, so definitely trig sub time. Um, looking underneath the square root, I notice I need to complete the square before I can even get the ball rolling. So 3, let's factor the negative out of x squared, and then 2x is going to become a negative 2x. I need to add 1 to make a perfect square trinomial, but really I just added an extra negative 1 into the expression. So I need a positive 1 to balance it all out. That way I basically added 0. And we're going to have 4 minus x minus 1 quantity squared. So that's what's underneath the radical. Looking at that expression now, I can see, all right, I'm going to let x minus 1 equal 2 sine theta. And then dx would equal 2 cosine theta d theta. Everything's pretty much accounted for except for this lonely little x squared in the front. And I'm just going to come right back here and solve for x so I can completely rewrite this integral in terms of theta. So we can see that x equals 2 sine theta plus 1. All right, so now let's rewrite our integral in terms of theta. So we have here integral 2 sine theta plus 1, that's x squared, times the square root. Now remember, underneath the radical, we really have 4 minus x minus 1 squared, which is 2 sine theta squared. So we have 4 minus 2 sine theta quantity squared. And then dx, y dx is 2 cosine theta d theta. All right. Beautiful. So everything's now rewritten in terms of theta. We love it. Now let's just clean it up. So 2 sine theta plus 1 quantity squared, I do need to just multiply that all out. So that's going to be 4 sine squared theta plus 4 sine theta plus 1. Boom. And then we have square root 4 minus 4 sine squared theta times 2 cosine theta d theta. Now the whole point of doing the trig sub is to free the expression underneath the radical. So remember we factor the 4 out, then you have 1 minus sine squared theta which is 4 cosine squared theta all under the radical sign. That means it's going to become 2 cosine theta. So let's see what's going on. I'm just going to keep rewriting this first expression here till we decide what to do. This is now just 2 cosine theta. And then don't forget, we still have another 2 cosine theta d theta. All right? Beautiful. What I'm going to do is take this 2 times 2, that's a 4, put it outside the integral. I can't take out any other 4s because this 1 doesn't have a 4 as well. So if you take something out, it has to be factored out of the entire integrand. So we have 4. And then this is cosine theta times cosine theta, which is cosine squared theta. So I will at the same time, distribute that through to everybody that's left. You should be able to handle this, okay? So this is going to be 4 sine squared theta cosine squared theta plus 4 sine theta cosine squared theta plus cosine squared theta d theta. And from here, we're going to just knock these out one at a time. I'm going to set up integral number 1 integral number two, and integral number three. Each needs to be dealt with differently, okay? So, onward and upward. Consider, for integral number one, we have four sine squared theta 
cosine squared theta d theta. This is kind of your worst case scenario when you have products of sines and cosines when they're both even. You can't do that odd man out trick that I've done in previous videos. So just think back to your sine double angle identity. Um, that's kind of where this is going. So I can rewrite this as 2 sine theta cosine theta quantity squared d theta, right? That would give me 4 sine squared theta cosine squared theta. And then you go, aha, uh -huh, this is sine 2 theta. And then that's all squared, which is okay. We can deal. When we have sine squared or cosine squared and we're trying to integrate it, we just use our half angle identity. So this is going to be integral 1 half, 1 minus cosine, and then you have to double whatever the angle is at the moment. So then it would become 4 theta, d theta. And then we can integrate, just leave the 1 half out of the show. Antiderivative of 1 is theta. Antiderivative of negative cosine 4 theta, I'm going to have a negative 1 fourth sine 4 theta, and I'm going to write plus C1, because this is my first of three little baby integrals before I put it all together. All right, let's put this on the back burner to simmer while we put our attention to the other two. So integral number two, we have four sine theta cosine squared theta d theta. Now this one's much nicer because I have an odd power of sine. And remember what you want is for sine theta d theta to basically be your du. That means, just think backwards, u should be cosine theta, not cosine squared, because that'll make a nasty little chain roll when you try to find du. So don't put the exponent on the trig function when you're making that u sub. Then du is negative sine theta d theta. That's fine, we can deal with the negative. So negative du is sine theta d theta. And then now this integral is, let's just take the four out, negative four. Um, sine theta d theta is that du with the minus sign I already put outside and then cosine squared is just u squared. See how beautiful? Okay, and then add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, it's gonna be negative four thirds u cubed plus c2. And then, no, I'll keep it purple. This is gonna be negative four thirds cosine cubed theta plus c2. All right, that's the second one. One more, what was it? Oh, just cosine squared theta, actually pretty harmless, okay. So integral number three, <clears throat> we have integral cosine squared theta d theta. So show off your half angle skills. I'm going to put the one half outside. I like it to not pester me. And then you're just going to have one plus cosine two theta d theta. Yeah, you just put that to memory. And then when it's time to use it, you go, whoop, here's the identity that I took precious time memorizing, and look how useful it is. So one half times antiderivative of one is just gonna be theta, and then cosine two theta is gonna be plus one half sine two theta plus C3. All right, so now as I put them all together, be careful, because remember we had that four sitting out front? Do you, did you remember? I did, here. So I have to um, put a four outside of some extra brackets while I put the results of all three of these little baby integrals all together. Okay, so now we have four times, I'll just copy them down gently, one half theta minus one fourth sine four theta minus four thirds cosine cubed theta plus one half times theta plus one half sine two theta, boom, boom, plus C. And then we gotta tell everybody, where did this C come from? Well, C is four C one plus four C two plus four C three. Okay, now <clears throat> remember the original integral was in terms of X. So we're gonna have to draw a triangle to get back there. And then notice, I do have to, 
fix the fact that I have four thetas and two thetas in my antiderivative because the triangle is only going to be in terms of theta. So we're going to have to use our double angle identities and whatnot to get back to just theta land, not four theta or two theta. Mm -mm. And we have some cleaning up to do. So let's see, we've got four times. Let me just start distributing. This is one half theta minus one eighth sine four theta minus four thirds cosine cubed theta plus half a theta plus one fourth sine two theta. Okay, plus C. Nothing crazy happened yet. Now let's start using our double angle identity. So we've got one half theta minus one eighth. So sine four theta, that's sine of two times two theta. So this would become two sine two theta cosine two theta, okay, minus four thirds cosine cube theta plus half theta plus one fourth times sine two theta is two sine theta cosine theta. All right. So I still have to fix the fact that here's a two theta, here's a two theta. Remember, my triangle is just going to be for theta. So four times, did you notice these are like terms, half a theta and half a theta? That makes one whole theta. Minus one eighth. Actually, let's just distribute the four while we're at it. Doesn't that sound nice? So we don't have to keep fretting. Um... Yeah, so this is going to be 4 theta minus 4 times 1 eighth, so that's going to be 1 half times 2 times sine 2 theta is another 2 sine theta cosine theta. Then for cosine 2 theta, you have a couple options. Cosine 2 theta is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. I know I used with the original trig sub sine theta, so I'm just going to use 1 minus 2 sine squared theta for my cosine double angle. So that's done. Someone's emailing me. How obnoxious. Minus... 4 times 4 thirds, that's going to be 16 thirds cosine cubed theta. That one's fine. I already took care of these two guys. They're right here. And then last one, if I distribute the 4 to the 1 fourth, it cancels. So I just have 2 sine theta cosine theta plus C. Okay, okay. Now, this 2 and this 1 half cancel. And then I do have to distribute this through, okay? I know. It's going to get worse before it gets better. So 4 theta minus 2 sine theta cosine theta plus, be careful, be careful. Here's 2 times 2. So that's going to give me 4 sine cubed theta cosine theta minus 16 thirds cosine cubed theta plus 2 sine theta, cosine theta, plus C. Do you notice something? I got excited as soon as I saw. Here's 2 sine theta, cosine theta, and negative 2 sine theta, cosine theta. So they're gone. Oh, that's just extra lovely. Okay, so now it's triangle time. If you want to go back, or hopefully you jotted it down, our original substitution was we let x minus 1 equal 2 sine theta. That means x minus 1 over 2 is sine theta. So we can draw a triangle right here. Here's theta. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And then this side here is going to be square root of 4 minus x minus 1 squared. But instead, I'm going to think of it the way it was written originally in the integral before we completed the square. So square root of 3 plus 2x minus x squared. Okay, now let's go term by term and write everything in terms of x again. So we have 4 theta. That's going to be 4 times, just look right here, theta is sine inverse of x minus 1 
over two. So this is right here. Good? Beautiful. Plus, next one is happening right here. Four. Sine cubed theta. Sine is x minus one over two. So just cube that. X minus one over two. Cube it. Cosine theta. Cosine theta is ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent was square root three plus two x minus x squared over hypotenuse, which was two. And then last one is this guy, 16 thirds, so minus 16 thirds cosine cubed theta. So cosine was square root three plus two x minus x squared over two cubed plus c. Woo, the worst is over. Now it's just time to call the cleanup crew. Okay, this first term, you can't touch it. Don't even think about getting in here. The four and the two have nothing to do with each other. So four, sine inverse, x minus one over two, that's the argument. That just stays together like a little happy family. Plus, this is four times, let's split it up, x minus one cubed over eight, and then you have square root three plus two x minus x squared over two, minus 16 thirds. I'm gonna write the numerator as three plus two x minus x squared to the three halves. And then the denominator gets cubed, so it becomes eight. And then just one more line and we're done. Yes, so this is four sine inverse x minus one over two plus, let's see here, this is 16, four over 16 is one fourth, x minus one cubed, square root, three plus two x minus x squared. That's honestly as nice as that one's gonna get. And then let's see here, 16 over eight gives me two, that won't cancel with the three, so just minus two thirds times three plus two x minus x squared to the three halves plus c. And then I'm gonna box this with the utmost pride because my goodness, this is a thing of beauty. This is very spicy, not impossible, just a lot of steps, right? Quite a lot of steps. I wouldn't put it on an exam for my students. I think it's unnecessary. You don't need to like torment them to see what math they can do. But if I was ever inclined to put like an extra credit on, you know, that's more my style. Everyone has their own style though, you know what I mean? So give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment. I love reading your comments. I hope you guys are enjoying these integrals of the day as much as I am. I'm trying to dig up good ones. Don't worry, I won't do such a wild one tomorrow. But it's always nice to kind of stretch our brains and see, you know, how detail-oriented can we be? Can we not make silly mistakes? It's very important to hold yourself to that high level while doing mathematics. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you're taking a math class right now, I have plenty of lecture videos organized into playlists. And you can also catch me on TikTok and Instagram at math TV with Professor V. Take care, you guys.